Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Aaron, I'm the Brick Scavenger. I put together tens if not hundreds of Lego minifigures every day for resale. And the worst part about the job is the Lego minifigure head. So many colors, so many patterns, trying to find the right one for the right figure is just a nightmare. So no long intro today. Let's talk about how I organize my Lego heads to make them easy to find when I need them. All right, guys, here it is. This is my Lego minifigure head organization shelf system here. I am very excited about having it. I had my dad build me this thing when he was visiting one day. We have so many types of Lego heads. There are the light nougat heads. There are the yellow heads. There are so many different color heads. All of these color heads are fairly easy to deal with, so we can start there. I just basically put these on different plates organized by color, have the faces all pointing outward, and it's pretty easy to find the blue head that you need or the reddish brown head that you need when you need it based on that because there just aren't that many heads of the you know unusual colors but when you're talking yellow and you're talking light nougat oh man so let's talk about how i organize these types of heads let's start with light nougat i have them broken down into eight different categories to start and then from there uh they're broken down into some subcategories a little bit but what you're going to see, if I go in here closer, the top four shelves shelves are all blocked open type heads, okay? Meaning, if you're not aware, the top of the head has sort of like a Y-shaped pattern on the inside. So all of the heads that you see on the top four shelves are going to be blocked open type, all right? Then they're broken down into male or neutral gender, or they're broken down into female. Now you can see Lego has made a lot less female light nougat heads than they have males. But when you're looking for a female head, it's pretty easy to find in the female category. And then finally, they are broken down into whether or not they are single print. You'll notice that these do not have any prints on the back or whether they are broken down into dual faces, meaning there's a secondary face printed on the back. All right, so this top shelf, for example, is blocked open, male, single, Blocked open male dual. Blocked open female single. She's lonely. And blocked open female dual. Now, if a shelf category gets too big like this one did, I try to sub break it down into uh, subcategories. So you'll notice these I've referred to as bald or facial hair. And that makes a little bit easier to find what I need when I need it because the goal was to cut it in half. It didn't quite work, but you get the idea. All right, and then we go down here and we've used the same system down here, but now we're talking about hollow instead of blocked open, meaning that you'll notice these are fully filled in. Now they are not quite the same as the uh, studs that are really old where that divot is actually completely filled in with plastic but same idea applies here except these are hollow so you'll notice we've got hollow male single hollow male dual hollow female single hollow female dual all right and then this category got too big so we went to bald versus facial hair again and same deal bald versus facial hair in the dual uh, faces. Obviously, it's not gonna work real well to do female facial hair. So we had to find a different way to organize those. So we went with glasses or goggles versus no glasses or goggles. And 
I know those ones right there on the left don't have glasses, but I just kind of called chin straps goggles only because I was trying to find a way to break them down. So these are mostly just plain printed female heads versus accessorized female heads. So having those eight categories helps a lot when lo needing to locate a light nougat head specifically for a figure. Now what's not included in some of those, if I go over here, would be some of like the clone heads, for example. These are all this printed head. I know that those are specifically for clones or the, what I keep these in the Senate commandos, but these uh, clone heads here in the Luke Skywalker drawer. If you know specifically that something is a Luke Skywalker, I know a couple of those are not, but organization's not perfect. You get the idea. But for the most part, all the light nougat heads are over here. Let's talk yellow heads. Yellow heads have a very similar system, but holy moly, are there a lot of yellow Lego heads out there, as you can probably imagine. But as a start, we've got blocked open male single, blocked open male dual, just as we did with the light nougat ones, blocked open female single, blocked open female dual. And then we go to the hollow ones, same deal. But now you can see just how many blocked open male single ones there are. And it's a lot. So we had to sub break these down again. Blocked open male single, pretty much just plain heads. And then we added, whoops, you can't see it, but these are the ones obviously with glasses or goggles. And then these are back here, ones with facial hair. All right. So broken down into three subcategories there. These have not warranted yet a subcategory, nor have these or these. Uh, these are the hollow single male plane, same deal goggles, same deal facial hair. Now, you might ask, what happens if it has both goggles and facial hair? And at this point, I've said uh, that goggles trumps facial hair. So, anyway, you just got, you know, you got to pick a system and go with it. And that's what I went with. Uh, then you'll notice over here, we have got printed hair. Some of these printed hair minifigure heads are silly, expensive. Holy moly. So I actually have been putting these aside. They're pretty easy to pick and put to the side when you're sorting. And so uh, I broke these down into uh, black printed hair versus red printed hair or other printed hair. And then we have the ones with no facial hair and the ones with facial hair, red, no facial hair, and red facial hair. So again, if I back up, you'll see that the entire wall makes it uh, pretty easy to you know, see all of the figs, heads. And what I can confirm is that if you go into, if you do the same system with like drawers and you end up with like drawers and drawers of heads, even if you stack them, you still have to pick up each individual head and try to find the one you want. And it takes forever. But if you can just look at a wall of heads, you can quickly scan the entire wall for the head that you are looking for. So I totally understand that we're nerding out here and that this video is not gonna be for everybody. But when you're in the business of rebuilding hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of minifigures, time is crucial. And if you can minimize the amount of time it takes to find a piece, 
it is going to mean more builds per hour, more sales per hour, less frustration per hour. <laughs> So there you go, that is how I organize my Lego heads. Usually what I do is I make a loose drawer full of heads. These are old, old organized that I still need to put on the wall. But I'll just throw all the heads in a drawer as things come in and then in the, when the drawer fills up, we will sort the drawer and put them on the wall. Happy sorting out there, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this wasn't too boring for you. If you got this far in the video, you must be as much of a Lego nerd as I am. We'll see you next time.